Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here and welcome back to Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I'm glad to be back here with you and trying to keep up with some, some new material for all of you curious souls out there. I discovered something, or rather one of my students in a workshop shared something with, with me, so thanks Sue for this. And if you've ever worked with Tyvek, you know what it does. And if you don't, go back and visit one of my earlier videos on Tyvek. Tyvek is that uh, material that you find that when you heat it, you get these incredible textures. This one, you can see how the bubbles go this way or they go indented. So I painted this one following making it bubble. This is just the Tyvek, actually this was from the post office, or FedEx rather, and this is what you're gonna use to heat. I'm not gonna show you this one, so go back and watch that other video. What I am gonna show you is something that's really, really cool. And there's a benefit to it. You get to eat chocolate or popcorn or chips. So this is from a popcorn bag. As you can see, just put this down. It has a foil. This one has a foil on the inside. I've already tested a little bit here. And I'm just going to cut off the bottom of this bag. I'll show you the whole thing. I think it would probably work with a, a chip bag as well. I'm going to cut it along this seam. We'll see if I can tear it apart. So first you have to eat the popcorn. Then you get this open, and I like to just clean it off. You see there's a little bit of the oil or something, and I'm just gonna take a paper towel with some alcohol on it. You could probably just use soap and water and wipe it clean. Now with, the, with doing this, with this foil, you can do it the same as Tyvek. You can paint it before, or you can paint it afterwards. I'm gonna show you both. This one, I have already painted it, and I've started to, to heat it to see what happens. So let me get my heat gun. You don't wanna use a hairdryer. You wanna use a heat gun or an embossing gun, something that gets really hot. However, I, don't, don't use one of those ones that's made to peel paint. Those get a little too hot. So I'm gonna just start with this, this one. And that's why I was doing my little test yesterday to see. The other thing that will happen, here's your heat source. If you're heating this way, your bubbles are gonna appear on the other side. And so if you want the bubbles to come up, you wanna heat to this side. See, it's starting to shrink up. So I'm just gonna stop and show you. Isn't that cool? So you see how much it really does uh, shrink up though. So I'm gonna keep going with this one. Doesn't take very long. So I put this thick layer of paint right there just to show you that if you have thick paint, it's not going to want to bubble the same as if you're using a very thin layer of paint. So don't put a heavy body paint on there. Use a very thin paint. Now if you want to flatten this out a little bit, 
like I did here. Isn't that a beautiful texture that you can get? I just put this between some cooking parchment paper and then just take my iron with a low heat setting and just flatten it out, not enough to, to bubble it. You can also bubble it that way as well, but you don't get the same kind of depth. You would get more of this type of a technique, which if you're wanting to put it into your painting, might be what you're looking for. And the way I adhere this is using a gel medium, something that's thick enough, you know, like a, a regular gel or a heavy gel. And that would be go onto the side and then press it and let it dry completely. It could take a day or two before it really dries onto your surface, depending on the surface you're using. So let me just show you without the paint on it. I'm gonna be using this uh, chocolate wrapper. And the benefit of this is, is that it smells like chocolate when you heat it. So if you don't eat chocolate, you know, I bet you can find, find a friend that does and uh, give you their chocolate wrapper. See, I wants to curl up like that. Now, if I were to heat it from this direction, let me just show you that real quick. You see how the bubbles are gonna go down in there rather than puffing up this way. So it just depends on what effect you want. But that is a really great way to get texture. I could come back in with some paint on top of this. Let me just grab a little paint. Now if you find that the, the paint is really thin and it doesn't want to really stay onto the metallic surface, you can add a little bit of a, a gloss medium to it. Let me just grab a couple of bottles of both of those products and show you what those are. So see how the, the uh, paint is kind of beading up? If I don't want it to do that, then I can add some of the gloss medium to the paint and it will give it a different viscosity, which can then really start to stick to the, to the metal. Now this medium is white when it's wet, but it will dry clear. So even though you might see some opacity here, this will dry more clear. So that's one way to do it. This was a metallic paint, which I just really thinned down. And there's one other quick thing I wanted to show you on this particular kind of Tyvek. This is the kind that comes from the building trade. And I don't usually use it because you have to buy like a huge portion of it. But if you see somebody who's building a house and you see this stuff around, go, you'll find some extra go, or meet your neighborhood builder, whatever. And the reason I liked this, I, I liked it because I didn't even heat it, but I'm just coming in with some paint on top of it into that crinkle. And iridescent bronze is the color I used watered down to get it to go into there as well. So just really play around with the, the different Tyvex, the different uh, chip bags, chocolate wrappers. The thing I use to put it all together is this regular gel gloss. Put it on the back side, glue it down to your surface, and make sure you check out that other video on how to use the Tyvek. You can use, um, oh, there's all kinds of cool things in there that you can use a, a embroidery hoop and irons and all kinds of fun stuff. Make sure you check out my website for upcoming art adventures and travel, workshops, online classes. Also, check out 
my Amazon shop. Uh, link is in the bio or in the comments, and you can find where to get some of these different products and paints, all that kind of great stuff that I use. So thanks for joining me, and until next time, happy creating. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me.